Hello and welcome to our first onboarding session, uh, level one onboarding for the Lifeboat Academy. And uh, today we're going to be going through basically the information that is covered in the Lifeboat Academy's driver statement, which using sociocracy is basically our charter and lays out what we're doing, why we're here, why we exist. And then we're going to go over uh, various social media tools that allow people to stay connected with what we're working on. And um, as we go through it, I am going to invite questions uh, as we go. And um, so um, after each slide, I'll present a little bit of information and I'll just check in to see if there's anything to ask or add. And um, then we can just cover things as we move through. Uh, so um, if you are new to the Lifeboat Academy idea, we are modeling resilience and regeneration at the person, place, and community level. That's why we exist, to build what we think of as a fleet of lifeboats, uh, where a lifeboat is a personal place-based resilience network that will help to get you and your loved ones through whatever might be coming. And it's not about a single lifeboat. It's actually about lifeboats networked together. And... Um, in doing this, uh, we are place-based, which means that we really center the land. And we center the land as a way of decentering the ego and um, helping us to build our collaborative skills. So uh, one of the things we've started saying around here is we care for the land to heal the people and we heal the people to care for the land. And we see this as a, a sort of mutually symbiotic relationship. And of course, that means that the life, because we're working at the level of resilience and regeneration, that means different things to different people. And there are different aspects of it that um, are like our Venn diagram of what we call this our compass. And um, resilience and regeneration depends on lots of different things coming together. And so there's lots of different ways that you can think about the Lifeboat Academy. Um, one is that we're an experiment in resilience and regeneration, and we mean something very specific when we say experiment. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're trying things willy-nilly. It means that we're actually using a process where we uh, test our assumptions with reality testing, and we refine our approach as we move forward. So we treat all of our decisions as a series of experiments in resilience and regeneration. Um, we also hope that this is a practical response to the climate crisis. In particular, we focus on food sovereignty and being able to provide the basic needs of our little community to the extent that we can in a changing and chaotic environment. Uh, we also think of this as a way of growing strong, resilient communities, uh, which uh, community is really our secret su su human superpower. And um, so we're trying to create opportunities where we can uh, practice and grow that muscle. And part of that is, a, is at the personal level of resilience is a mindfulness practice of figuring out how we can be present with what is and um, find our flow with it no matter what. And this is also a place where we are healing from Wutiko or Wendingo, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, and another way of saying that is uh, uh, it's akin to hospicing modernity um, or uh, um, trying to figure out how we decolonize ourselves. And ultimately, we are moving towards something that we can't quite see from where we are. Um, but going, moving towards recreating the village where we come together with diverse perspectives and skills and support ourselves, creating a, a, a resilient community. And we're moving towards reclaiming the commons where we are moving away from um, commodification of land and living things and an economic system that seems to be a bit out of whack at the moment. So we're looking to figure out how we move towards a more sustainable and more humane economic base. Um, so all of those things are happening here at the same time. And the beauty of this is no one has to know all of these or be interested in all of these. There's a spot for anyone who is interested in working on any of these aspects of the Lifeboat Academy. 
So before moving on, are there any questions there or comments, additions? Actually, let's just uh, do a quick circle. So the circle as I see it is Linda Roland, then me. So Linda, over to you, questions or comments? I didn't quite understand the word with what Tico. Could you <laughs> define that yeah. again? Um, with, with Tico or Wendingo is uh, an Algonquin, it's a, it's a First Nations parable. And um, uh, the one I, I learned is through the Algonquin. And, um, but it's basically the story of a cannibal who, uh, whose appetite grows as it consumes. So the more it consumes, the more it desires. And it basically is a cannibal who's eating its own limb and thinking somehow that it's not causing itself harm. Yeah, which is what our whole society is doing right now. Okay, got it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything else? Um, no, I really, uh, I really like the um, consciousness with which the purposes have been put together. I'm, um, I continue to wonder where is everybody? Like we should all be. The, your this organization should be larger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wonder the same thing. But, you know, every day in every way, we're growing stronger and stronger. So, <laughs> Roland, over to you. I was, just, uh, uh, I was just looking for, um, there is an article that Ben wrote about Wetiko that also explains in more detail how... Um, so far, we're understanding the the term in relationship with the Lifeboat Academy. And when I find it, I will add it to the chat uh, as a uh, as a uh, as a resource. And actually, a lot of the uh, articles that Ben has written for Medium are um, uh, relate to the perspective that we have so far with the uh, the Lifeboat Academy. So I will find that and. Uh, and I, uh, for uh, for my part, we can we can move on to the next slide. All right. So uh, the next thing that's important to cover is that we use sociocracy as the framework on which we base our organizational structure and our decision making. Um, uh, I think it's always important to say I am not proposing sociocracy as a trademarked or a limited way of going about things. We're not slavishly adhering to it. And actually, I think that's the beauty of Sociocracy 3.0 is that it, it doesn't ask you to do that. And, um, and it's really looking at how can we learn from our experience about when collaboration works best. And so the goal is effective collaboration at any scale and a place where we um, individually and collectively benefit from how we organize ourselves. And it's recognizing that there is a balance point where we wanna maximize innovation and agency, creativity and autonomy, um, and at the same time, minimizing those areas where conflict or um, uh, disorganized redundancy can um, slow an organization down. Um, as I mentioned, if people are familiar with this idea of a pattern language, it is basically uh, not the idea isn't that we are creating anything new. We're not inventing anything. We're actually looking for the patterns that already exist in nature, looking for the patterns of when collaborations work. And then we draw those patterns out and make them available as a toolkit that we can apply when we need to. And as a, uh, as a sort of foundation to that, there's a set of principles and a kind of organizing, guiding understanding of what are the advantages and disadvantages of the different tools in different situations. And uh, so the principles are really important. And uh, for my money, the this is really the bedrock of good collaboration. I shall uh, just, uh, we're gonna uh, have a separate onboarding session where we go into sociocracy uh, next Friday. And uh, so I'm not gonna say a lot about that, but. I will just say my personal experience was as a facilitator and a consultant, I was already developing my own version of sociocracy without realizing it. I was thinking about what works and what doesn't work in the groups that I worked with, what seemed to be important. And when I stumbled on sociocracy, I had this aha moment of somebody's already done this and done more and gone further with it than I had. 
And um, one of the activities that I use with a lot of my groups is a peak experience exercise where I say, think about a time when collaboration worked really well. And what was it that was going on under the surface that allowed that to happen? And invariably, these are the things that come up. And so um, the principles are really, really core to what we're doing. First, first and foremost is equivalence, which is an understanding that you involve people in the decisions that affect them. Um, and it kind of is a no-brainer because people who are affected by a decision, if they're not involved in that decision-making, there's gonna be gaps. There's gonna be things that are missing, perspectives that are missing. So it's actually a go slow to go fast approach of making sure that everyone who's affected gets some way of shaping that decision. And also uh, consent, uh, which is that anybody who feels that they are going to be harmed by a decision has the right to raise an objection. And those objections need to be addressed before you can move forward. So rather than thinking of objections or problems as something that we avoid or push under the surface, we actually seek them out. Because again, we know it's uh, going slow to go fast. Those, those problems are gonna come up whether we talk about them or not. If we talk about them ahead of time, we can come up with solutions before we have the problem. Um, we also focus on effectiveness. I like to shorthand this as what's the 20 that gets us 80, if people are familiar with the Pareto principle. Um, we know there are some things that we do that actually yield a lot of fruit. And there's also a lot of stuff that we engage, a lot of activity that we engage in that, you know, doesn't necessarily move things forward. So how do we avoid kind of spinning our wheels? Um, one of the pairs to consent is accountability. Um, which is an equivalence, which is we bring people in on decision making. But once decisions are made, people need to follow through on the agreements that they've made. Um, and uh, we also um, base everything on empiricism, which in the sociocracy language is really about how do we test the assumptions? How do we do things in a way where we can see whether it's working or not um, and actually be able to sort of notice it in the room? What's it look like? How do you show someone that it's working? And for all of this to work, we need transparency. We need the information that's necessary for people to make good decisions available. And transparency is more than just putting all the information out there. It's also about making sure the information is available um, and digestible. Um, so we're not sort of plastering people with the fire hose of information. And then underlying all of this is an idea of continuous improvement, um, which I think of uh, the Maya Angelou quote, we do the best we can until we know better, and then we do better. And we're constantly seeking ways that we can do better. And we're also aware, alive to the fact that sometimes we're gonna mess up, sometimes we're gonna make mistakes. And so partly we also are um, uh, really open, receptive to the idea that if harm has been caused, we want to make sure that we can fix it, that we can uh, address the harms that might have been caused as soon as we can in the best way that we can. So um, those are the principles that underlie everything that we're doing. And um, they really do seem to be, again, nothing new under the sun. And if you think about when it's worked well in your own experience, you'll probably come up with a, a list that's pretty similar. So with that, I'll just pause and go once through the circle. Any questions or comments? Uh, Linda, over to you. <clears throat> well, I know at some point I, I'll bring it up, so I may as well bring it up here. Um, you know I have a background in David Bohm's dialogue, so I, and I've also used sociocracy, and I, I think um, there are certain times at which more of a free flow dialogue works better, like maybe when you're trying to consider something um, brand new and you you know you want the environment to be as unstructured as possible. So I'm just going to be a watchdog for that. Not that I disagree with any of these core principles. They fit right into how I do my work using mainly dialogue. This is a great though. I, when I found sociocracy, I was so happy because, the problem with David Bohm's work is it's only half the, the, the process. You need a decision-making process at the end of it. Um, so this is, you know, it's a nice compliment, I guess I would say. So I'm, I'm pleased to see that you're using it, but I know I will probably be a, a bear at times and ask for some unstructured dialogue free form time. You know, it just depends. 
Yeah, and, and I think that's great. We also, um, in addition to sociocracy, we are uh, circle process uh, mavens as well. And and I think it's really about the more tools we have in the toolkit yeah. um, and, and really understanding the context of when to apply those tools, exactly. the better off we are. Um, so yeah, like I said, we I, I have no desire to be slavish um, and to think that there's a, a, like a, a recipe for how this has to work and actually trusting that we all, we can feel into when, when we need different tools. Um, so yeah, I continue to be a bear, <laughs> continue to keep an eye on it and, and we're all better off for it. So that's great. Uh, Bala? Uh, I think that actually um, is uh, being a bear is very much in keeping with uh, our the way that we do circle process, which is that everyone is a circle keeper. So uh, if if anyone notices that maybe something a different approach would be useful, they can bring it up. Um, so so that that's that's uh, that fits right right in. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, I, the only thing I wanted to add over to Ben. Yeah, it's when we, like I said, we'll go, we'll have the whole session on sociocracy next week. And uh, one of the principles is called artful participation. And uh, one of the questions to ask yourself is, would I actually be advancing this process by intervening and stopping it? You know, that, that uh, um, yeah, sometimes the right thing to do is to, to step out of the process and, mm -hmm. and introduce another idea. Um, so um, we also have in that spirit of how do we learn from our own experience, um, we have uh, crystallized some of our strategies, our lessons learned about how it works best for us. And um, as I mentioned, it's also um, in line with sociocracy. We treat everything as an experiment. And um, we shorthand that as aim, act, reflect. So we're always going through a process of thinking reflecting back on things that we've tried. Did they work? Didn't they work? What worked? What didn't? What do we want to do more of? What do we want to do less of? And then aiming and imagining how could this work better? You know, what are some blue sky thinking about how we could do this better? And then turning it into some concrete action plan so that we can test out our assumptions in reality. And um, we also recognize uh, that we are embedded in an intelligence greater than our own. And there's lots of ways of thinking about this. Um, and uh, one, of, one important application of that is biomimicry, recognizing that nature, the whole of experience on earth is um, a, a treasure trove of lessons and examples of different strategies that we can be using to apply to the challenges that we face. And also Wu Wei solutions, which is a Taoist um, idea. Wei is directive, intentional action. Wu Wei is the kind of action or energy that grows plants, where the, you know, the, the flowers don't think about flowering, they just flower. And um, so we want to move towards those kinds of solutions that, that feel effortless in in how we um how we work together um we also using that biomimicry we think of the the lifeboat academy we think of the farm as an organism composed of organs and um in particular we uh use the sociocracy language as that's how we discover our functional areas and as part of our design charrette this year we we re-examined how we put together our functional areas, um, but we're really looking at uh, the farm, the Lifeboat Academy as an organism. It needs inputs to stay alive. It creates, creates outputs, some of which you might think of as waste, and some of them you might think of as products, but they're all outputs. And how do we think in a regenerative loop about how we cycle the outputs that we produce through that kind of rejuvenation effect of the, the environment in which we live to create the kinds of inputs that then, you know, help us thrive as an organization. And in particular, then that's how we've developed our guild system, um, hard work and philosophy, thinking about the worldview that underlies what we're doing and how do we make sure there's alignment there, principles and governance. So how are we making good decisions together? 
and again, healing any harms that might happen. Uh, finance and legal, how do we navigate in the world as it exists out there? Um, farm, farm food and housing, the practical, how do we grow food and harvest energy and uh, keep ourselves alive and well? And outreach and network, which we think of as the mycelial network that that links all of the different um, uh, lifeboats and lifeboat allies out there in the world. So um, that's the farm as organism. And then our last strategy is really recognizing the centrality of trust in being able to build strong and effective relationships. And uh, to build trust, we need to be trustworthy. And um, using the social psych uh, framework, there are three elements of trust, transparency, alignment, and demonstrated capacity. Um, so we need to make sure that all of those things are in place. Um, that we, and I think it's useful given another event that I was at recently, alignment is not the same as coherence. Um, alignment is not the same as unanimous agreement, um, but it is understanding we like to talk about we're all at different places in the landscape and some of us are traveling in sort of parallel course. And that's that's what alignment is, um, how we can be moving in our own way through the landscape in a way that supports each other and doesn't block each other. So again, a quick pause just once around. Any questions or comments? Linda, over to you. Oh, you're muted. Um, are, I'm just kind of curious, are the strategies, are they part of uh, sociocracy or you just kind of brainstorm them and brainstorm? Uh, they are the um, result of applying sociocratic principles in AMAC to reflect and gathering the continuous improvement. So these are over the years, the things that we have come back to again and again, and again as being sort of central to moving forward. And there, uh, I think that's, they, it, this is, everything's a living document. And um, so they are strategies that are intended to evolve as we do and, and to refine, be refined as we do. The AIM Act and Reflect reminds me a lot of Otto Scharmer's um, work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in agreement. Over to you, Rolla. Uh, when we're talking about experiments where where it's uh, I just wanted to uh, build a little bit uh, more around that it isn't um, I think that this will work I'm going to stick it in the ground and then we'll see but it is um, something uh, something that can be carried into the future so something that can be documented that's measurable that's trackable and that has a methodology around uh, um, what to do with the results. So, uh, and I also wanted to, there's there's a, a incomplete farm lexicon. And when we talk about uh, being in different places in the landscape, I just want to clarify that a little bit also. It is uh, sort of a, a non-linear way of talking about that we're all on the path, the path indicating that there is one starting point and one end point, as opposed to a whole landscape, which is a multiplicity of signs and experiment and, and uh, uh, experiences, um, and that people can be in different places in the landscape where they ho they hold a certain package of experiences and learning from those experiences that can relate to other people, but no one will be exactly in the same place in the same way that we can't stand, we can't stand in the same place. So I don't know if that clarifies or muddies more what, uh, what we, we mean by being in different plant places in the landscape, but it, essentially it is that every every place that a person is, is valuable. And every place that a person is also has its limitations. And so there, that's that's it for me over to Ben. Right, and that's why we also have agreements <clears throat> and um, the agreements are what do we each need to be present and show up and fully show up and work well together. 
So the agreements are really talking about how we work with each other and recognizing, again, like Roland was saying, different people need different things and the same people need different things from time to time. So uh, we think of the agreements as part of the oral tradition. We, uh, we often talk about the um, blind ones and the elephant, um, which is a South Asian parable about just what Roland was saying. We all have some knowledge, some experience. We also all have limitations. And um, so how do we work together in a way that we can blend those, those insights? And so uh, these agreements are, they do morph over time, but we've found that there are some consistent elements that really seem to hold up. Um, one is a reminder that we're all in this together. We often say in the big picture on this globe, whether we want to be or not, we're all in this together. And on the micro also, we're in this together. We all share responsibility for whether this is gonna work or not. And so we, no one is in charge and no one is uh, innocent. No one is you know, without responsibility. Um, you have choice and choices have consequences. Again, um, this is we attempt to work in a non-coercive way. Um, no one can tell anyone else what to do. We all make our own choices and choices have consequences and you know there's nothing we can do about that. Um, and we need to be responsible to those. Uh, we lead with curiosity, kindness, patience, compassion, and gentleness. Uh, again, not out of a moralistic um, idea that that's what we should do, um, but really out of an understanding, this is just the most effective way of being with each other. It's the one that allows energy to move forward in a healthy way. Um, even when there's conflict, even when there's disagreement, that doesn't mean that we can't also have curiosity, kindness, and compassion around um, an encouragement to listen for understanding. Um, I used to say listen first for understanding, and now I have stopped the first part. It is to constantly listen for understanding, even as we move forward, um, and to realize that our understanding is always evolving, and there's always stuff that we're not hearing, even in our own ideas. Um, we speak from the heart, from what's true for each of us, recognizing that other people have different experiences and what's true for one person may not be true for another. Um, and both and in that same spirit, both and not either or. Um, so rather than arguing about um, the truths, we try to find where is there the both and? Where can we build on that, that uh, multiplicity of experiences to come out stronger? And ultimately, we want to have fun with this. We want to find the humor and keep it light, keep it simple, um, which is not the same as bright siding. So we're not trying to say um, there's that horrible expression, no, no, no bad vibes. Um, this is not a you can have bad vibes. That's OK. You can have bad days. You can have heaviness. But we also seek out and try to bring lightness to it. Um, to um, aspirate it, as the Buddhists would say. Um, so I think our agreements are fairly straightforward, and we do revisit these frequently every time we come together. Um, so uh, just a, a quick pause to see anything to add or any questions. Linda, over to you. I don't think so. I mean, it's it, um, it's it's very much in line with my own way of working in the world, so I'm I'm totally fine with it. Rolan, to you. I'm wondering about um, also, and I guess this this might not apply to all. Well, it's the um, we we try and we if we feel compelled to give advice, mm -hmm. uh, we listen to it for ourselves um that applies in terms of uh, sort of personal comment but it also applies in terms of you know the guilds and working in the guilds so another way of saying it is that there's no dump and run so you should do this i'm just here to give you advice is uh we're looking you know i think that to make, to, to make the guilds work the guild meetings are about people coming together to work together not to not to tell other people how what to do uh so yeah mm -hmm. i think 
I would suggest add and so that all in my mind that all fits in together the giving advice to somebody else telling somebody else you know what you should do um as opposed to oh this is coming up for me what does that mean for myself and uh and if if I feel something would be useful to do um then what can I do to to make that happen instead Mm -hmm. So over to you, Ben. Yeah, we might want to add that as an eighth agreement. Um, it is, uh, and it's also, I think it's part of healing from colonialism and, um, you know, part of privilege is, and, and people who are on the right side of colonization, to, if that can, you know, uh, if that such a thing exists, get really used to the idea that their job is to tell other, is to direct the staff. And um, so we need to deconstruct that idea that anyone is here to direct the staff. There is no staff. We are all in this together. And if it's gonna get done, somebody has to do it. And you should probably assume other people are pretty full up on what they're already working on. So how can you help make that happen? Yeah. Um, so uh, I think that this basically covers the, our, um, the driver statement for the Lifeboat Academy. And um, the other half of what we want to talk about today are ways that you can stay in the loop with what's going on. Um, we have tried very much to balance creating opportunities for people to follow along in the way that works best for them while not overburdening our reporting obligations. Um, so we've done a number of different things. Um, we lean into all of the social media or, or some of the more popular social media. Um, and so when we, um, uh, when we post to social media, we post to Facebook, Instagram, Mastodon, and TikTok, um, uh, you know, depending on whether or not it's appropriate in those, uh, you know, there's some limitations on Instagram, et cetera. Um, and uh, usually for our social media, it's a lot of announcements about events, um, posts about things that are going on, uh, fun memes, interesting things we see. Um, it's, you know, how most people use social media. And if you want to follow along, you can pick your media of choice and follow us. We have our account set up on, on each of them. It's basically Lifeboat Academy. And um, if you want to share anything or share something that we're doing, we encourage you to use the hashtag Lifeboat Academy, um, which we've kind of claimed for ourselves. And um, the other thing is we do have a Facebook group as opposed to a Facebook page. Um, groups are more interactive. And so this is our Lifeboat Builders group. And you can just find it on Facebook by searching Lifeboat Builders. And there we try to have more engagement and you know, post questions, ask people about their experiences, have little polls and things like that. So that's a more active way of getting involved in the social media front. And we would love people to be more active in the Lifeboat Builders group, actually putting out questions of your own or engaging other people in conversations that way. Um, so we've got the standard social media. Um, we also use Slack, um, which is a messaging app, a lot like WhatsApp, or Telegram, we just settled on Slack as our preferred way. And we use Slack as our walkie-talkie. And um, you can sign up for our Slack channel at lifeboatacademy.slack.com. Um, you can also send us an email and we can make you uh, an invite from inside the app. And once I go through this, I'll go over to the other screens and we'll actually walk through each of the, the different tools I just don't want to have to go back and forth between the, the PowerPoint and Slack. So the thing to remember here is that Slack is our walkie talkie. So it's really the day-to-day -day chatter about what's going on. Hey, you know, I can't find the, the rake. Where's the rake? Um, or, hey, here's a reminder that we're going to be having our lifeboat onboarding session this afternoon. Um, it also includes just fun photos of the goats doing wacky things or the chickens nesting in a stump. Um, so it's really the kind of more alive part of our social media. And of course, we have a website, lifeboat.academy, and we have an events page. We have a magazine, a, you know, basically a blog. 
Um, and we also have access to our help desk through the website, um, as well as information about how to get involved and how to invest in the Lifeboat Academy. And we, of course, have standard email. Friends at Lifeboat Academy is a shared inbox. You can send any questions, any, any ideas, any requests um, to friends at Lifeboat Academy, and it will get um, channeled to the right place, to the right field, to the right person. And we also have, speaking of email, um, we do have an email newsletter that is bi-weekly. It is um, primarily covers what our current events are, upcoming events, and we'll have summaries about things that we've been up to recently. So um, again, uh, normal normal stuff, web, uh, website and email, always good ways of getting in touch. We also have a help desk and um, the help desk is meant to be your one-stop shop for any questions or information you might have about what we're doing. Um, it is available independently at lifeboatacademy.freshdesk.com, or you can access it through the website. And anything, for example, what I'm going over today, the driver statement, or um, it's digital onboarding level one, those documents are both available through the help desk. So if there's anything that I cover today that you have a question about, you can go back to the document and actually see, see that information. And it's set up like a help desk so you can search on keywords or you can actually just pose a question. It'll bring up the articles that are the best fit. And, um, and likewise, you can give us feedback on those articles um, right through it. And again, I'll demonstrate that as soon as we go through here. And, and that is now. So um, I'm going to pop over to... Um, Slack. And can you see the the Slack image now? Awesome. Cool. So I um, earlier today, I sent an invite to uh, friends at Lifeboat Academy email. And so when you get an invitation from the Slack channel, this is what it'll look like. You'll be asked to sign in. You just click the little join now button. It'll take you to a page where you all you need to do is enter the name that you want to be known by in the app. And then it will bring you to something like this. So this is our, um, the Lifeboat Academy um, set of channels. Uh, the way that Slack works is there are a number of different channels so you can follow along with what you want. You don't have to follow everything. You will automatically be added to the announcements channel. Uh, that's where we post things that we think are relevant to everyone. And then you can choose to add yourself to any of the other channels. We have a channel for each of the guilds, plus for the coordination circle. And we have one for random fun. And I'm just show you how easy it is to add yourself to one of the channels. I'm just going to add uh, uh, so flow fielding. We have two, um, uh, how do I want to say two two spirit workers on the farm, Flo Fielding and Eb Gardner, and um, they're the ones who take care of all the things that nobody else can take care of. And anyhow, so Flo is joined. You can see Flo has her um, independent channel down here where you can text one and one one to one back and forth. And if Flo wanted to join into the outreach network, all you need to do is come down and click join the channel. And it's that simple. It's a public channel. You're now involved. And um, uh, anything that gets posted to that channel will come in and you'll get to see it. You can also, on any of the channels, except I think the announcements, but on any of the other channels, if you click at the, the name of it at the top, it will give you a, this pop-up window where you can start if it's a, a favorite channel, it'll come to the top of the list. You can also enable notifications or disable them, and you can set them in a couple of different ways. Um, I'm not going to set it right now, but if you click it, you can choose what kinds of messages get notified. Like if it's a, a message directly to you or one to the channel, you can um, uh, change those settings. You can also mute or leave the channel. So uh, if you 
mute the channel, it basically, you can still access it, but you won't get any notifications about it. And I think that's pretty straight. Other, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so just at, at that level, is, are there any questions about the channels or, or um, how you sign yourself on? Linda? Well, I'm still a little fuzzy. Um, <clears throat> I know you've sent me something on uh, Slack. I think I've joined it because I've gotten a couple of messages. Yeah. I have no yeah. idea which you know network or guild of Slack I'm on. I guess I'm. I guess my curiosity is I, I'd like to be on. Well, I'd like to be on some of them, and I'm not sure that I would know how to do that. Um, would I? Maybe walk me through how how I personally mm -hmm. would get on. I, I don't yeah. know. Um, well, how you can tell is you'll you should have a list of the public channels where under on the left hand column here under Lifeboat Academy, all of the channels will be listed, and they'll either be um, a pound sign if you're if you're in the channel or a plus sign if you're not in the channel. Oh, yet. oh, I see. Okay. And then all you need to do is click the plus sign, and you'll be added to that channel. Okay. And likewise, if you want to, you could also just in the announcements, make it send a message to the announcement. You're, you're automatically added to announcements. And mm -hmm. you could just say in the announcements, hey, could someone add me to the Heartwork channel? And we can easily add you to the channel. Okay. All right. Are people really using this? I mean, are people sharing articles and that kind of thing? Or is it just a, a quick, you know, this is just, you know, what? I'm doing or what something. I mean, I, I guess I'm just wondering how how you're using Slack. Oh well, we can take a look at. Um, actually, I'll go. Um, well, you can we can just look at this one. Um, so, you know, when we're we were putting together the onboarding sessions, um, as I created the links, we posted them into the outreach network so that they could get posted into the newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, we also see if there's um yeah uh, here we're having a little conversation over um one of the forms that we've been using so posted the the con the form into the channel and then posed some questions at the end and you can see then that there's ways for people to respond oh, wow. to to those uh so a lot of times it the primary use i would say is it is work related so hey mm -hmm. i have a question about this does anyone know? Or I was thinking about changing this wording to this. How do people feel about it? Um, but we also do share articles. Um, I found this interesting article the other day. Do you know where, um, uh, um, Roland, where there might be a good, I can- We, we, we either do it in ra random fun or in announcements. It's changed recently because of the, because of the, 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 this year's uh, guild formation um but uh yeah it would be in either one of those two um mm -hmm. yeah sometimes uh the i took a picture we had a chicken who was uh roosting in a, a an old tree stump was that and general I, farm? I took a picture and i but i put that in general farm because it had to do with the chickens mm -hmm. if you scroll up yep so, and you can see this is also, hey, what is this thing? Take a picture of it. <laughs> or um, our our uh, water pump is has a broken part. So, you know, we put, put it in Slack so people can find it. Where's the chicken? There's the chicken. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Cute. <laughs> yeah. Cute. So that, that's both a, a, a isn't that funny and, uh, and a heads up, uh, check the stump for eggs. <laughs> <laughs> At yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. Something else I wanted to ask, but I can't think what it is now. Um, okay, I'll, I guess I just have to play around with it and get used to it again. I yeah. used it for another, in another organization, and I, I don't think I totally learned it, but I'll... Well, and I will say there are probably lots of things. We have a, we use it pretty simply. So we have channels for the guilds. Anything that's guild related goes in those channels. We aren't very um, hard nosed about if you put a message in the wrong channel or if you put a message in that 
yeah. it, it, it's, you know, um, it's a small group of us who are using it. So we're, yep. we're really friendly. And, um, uh, and the one thing that we do do as, uh, that I just kind of wanted to point out is we are encourage people to use threads when you're responding to something specific. Um, so let's see if I can find an example where there's a thread. Um, trying to remember. Actually, this is a good one. So, um, you know, this was specifically something to do with our get to know you form. And then all of the responses around it, all of the questions and answers are, are handled in a thread. And the way that you can answer in a thread on any of the comments is you come over to the thing that looks like a little talk bubble mm -hmm. and you click that. And you can see also on the side here, you've got the thread when you have any of the messages highlighted on the right hand side, you're gonna have the thread, right? And the reason why that's handy is it keeps all of the conversations linked because sometimes it might be that you come back and you want to answer to a comment that was made yesterday. And there have been mm -hmm. other comments that have happened since then. So just answering in the, the thread makes it easier for people to follow along and make sure that, you know, we're not losing the, we're not losing yeah. the thread. Um, and that's pretty much, I think that's the only kind of how to stuff um, that's really necessary at this level. Um, yeah, Roland, over to you. Any anything else that you'd think you'd add about Slack? Uh nope, that was pretty good. Linda, any more questions or no, I think I just have to get used to it. It it, it seems pretty straightforward. There's not that many people on it. It looks like it's, you know, not gonna be overwhelming, so it's fine. Yeah. And like I said, you that's the other thing too, is you only need to follow the channels that you want to. And you can also turn off notifications so that, you know, if you want to just check in once a day or once a week or whatever, then, you know, the phone isn't going to be binging at you. Yeah. Um, it is. I, that's actually one other thing. This is the, the browser version of Slack. And there is a, an app, a, a desktop app and one on your phone. And I recommend the app. It's actually it makes it easier than dealing with it on your browser. Um, but then it's your choice. Some people don't like apps. So and... an app on your on my phone. Yeah. But if if it's on my phone, would I would I get messages or would I just always have to go check to see if I have a message? You would get like... the messages right on your phone. Right on my phone. Okay. Yeah, you can you can get and respond to the messages right on your phone. Otherwise, it's going to all be email generated. I mean, no, words, no, it's all web based. So you'd have to go to the browser. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't get any email notifications on Slack. I think it's oh, all. I do. That's the, that's the, that's the only way I've ever gotten anything from. Uh, okay, um, that's probably something that can be set in your preferences, but generally speaking, when we use it, it's all app. It's all in the app. Mm -hmm. So um, I will. I'll make a note for myself to figure out how the email side of this works. Yeah, I, I <clears throat> that would be interesting because I've never, I, I didn't realize there was an app. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that. And then the yep. next, go ahead. Excuse me. The only thing weird about uh, there being an app called Slack is how, if I get it, then how do I actually find you? I mean, in other words, Slack. I don't think I'm going to get this. Um, well, first of all, because you're already signed up. Yes. When you, if you download the app from Slack, from any of the email that you've received, then it's already going to populate it with our, our site. And and you'll see it'll say Lifeboat Academy. Yes, I do get it on my brow my email browser. I am getting that now. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, Linda was having some questions about the uh, downloading the app and getting it installed. If you would like, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one office time, and we can actually help walk through getting everything set up the way that you want it to. So um, 
if you, and that's also for anyone watching this video, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered today, feel free to sign up for one of the office hours and, um, and we can take it from there. So uh, the last two things that I wanted to show folks, um, one is the help desk. And again, lifeboatacademy.freshdesk.com is the help desk. It works like any of the other help desks that you've been on for um, probably for you know different software. Um, you can actually uh, put in uh, a, a question like driver statement and it should come up with, uh, oh, right here, Lifeboat Academy driver statement and agreement. So everything that we covered today in this video is also duplicated on the webs on the help desk. So you can read our driver statement right here, and you can always provide us feedback at the bottom. We are trying to keep things up to date and and complete, but you know uh, we're only human. And so if you aren't finding what you were looking for, you can actually just click no. This article wasn't very helpful. It'll pop up a little form, and you can put in whatever you, you know, what was missing or what was out of date or what were you looking for that you couldn't find. And that will instantly send a message to us um, like as an email and we can have a, a conversation that way back and forth. Um, you'll also notice that when you click on any of the articles, you'll see related articles off to the side. And we try to do as much as we can to link them um, so that you can, you know, if there's more information there, there may be something there. And we've also organized a few little um, knowledge bases, little subsets of if you're a lifeboat builder, um, there's a set of articles for what you might be interested in, um, how we can help you build your lifeboat, um, the, the steps that we suggest. Um, or likewise, if you are wanted to come for a visit, um, actually see us here on Sadea's Pender Island. And if you're looking for ways of investing or getting um, uh, getting more involved, there's also some specific articles there. So you can come to the help desk at any point, um, browse the articles, connect with us by submitting a ticket. Or if you happen to be on the website, you can also access the help desk on every page in the lower right-hand corner, there's gonna be this help button. If you click it, it's going to bring up uh, a, What's the question that you have? And the same thing. So if I put in driver statement into the help desk here, then it's going to bring up, oh, look, there we go. And you can see it right from the website. And the same thing. Is that thing the easiest? I'm sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. It, is that the easiest way to get to the help desk is to go to the website and then click on help? Okay. So yeah. That was kind of my basic yeah. question. Yep. I mean, it's it's super easy to go to the, the webs. The help desk online is just lifeboatacademy.freshdesk.com. So any browser will get you there quick, quickity split. Uh, but you can also access it. It's the same exact information. It's just two different ways in. Okay. Um, so and then this is our, our website. And again, we are trying to keep it up to date, but we are, are um, have limited staffing hours available, and um, so you know uh, feedback is always so helpful. Anybody with those abilities and skills who want to jump in and help us out with that, that would be very very welcome. Mm -hmm. Linda, I, I one thing I did notice when I just took a very cursory look through it. Um, it made me it made me feel like the website wasn't really terribly active and you might want to fix it or something it seemed like every like the, uh if you click around on it there something pops up it says um do this but it was the same do this for m most things does that make sense hmm. um well we've only like, just oh, launched the website uh in launched, in okay. january so oh, okay. we're we're still actually shaking the bugs out of it, and we've got, we've got some loading issues um, where everything is a bit slow to load. So yeah, we're still shaking that out. We're okay. And it's one of the things that um, I wanted to bring up to the um, what's the name of that guild? The outreach, outreach and guild. Network. Outreach and network. Yeah, yeah. that's where. Because we we don't we don't yet have a way of you know you know these things come up. 
what do we do with them? Who do we talk to? Right. Is so so we have we have a very very kind and very generous um, uh, web developer who built this for us, but then who contacts him? You know, if there's well, something I, that happens that we I, can't do ourselves, then so 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 this is where the magic of the guilds come in, <laughs> useful. It's like now that now we know there are things that we need to discuss. It's just working out how to prepare that and how to how to direct it so that it it uh, it doesn't cause more problems than it fixes yeah and and yeah. i, I want to add to the again we don't have staff nobody here has staff and our web developer has generously volunteered has donated all of the time for does all of the design work and all of the setup and um, so we want to be really respectful and not go back to him for every little tweak. So we need to develop the in-house capacity so that we can be updating things without relying on that generosity, over relying on that generosity. Um, so mm -hmm. this is very much a mutual aid, you know, network. This is we are the ones we are the ones who are doing this. And um, but what I mostly what I wanted to point out is, um, you know, there's a little bit about us, um, which gives you the sort of the overview of what we're trying to do, um, what this project is all about. There is an events page that, again, we try to keep up to date with ways that you can get involved and with uh, active ways of, you know, if you want to sign up for something, you can click on it right from the events page. Uh, there's a place where potential investors or donors, excuse me, can get more information. Um, we are also have our blog, our magazine. Um, right now, we just have some placeholder stories, which are mostly things that I've already published on Medium. But we're hoping, again, to get people more actively involved in contributing to it so that the magazine can actually be a, a place where we can all be sharing our our thoughts and kind of do some collaborative lighting writing collaborative learning um on the website and um and i think that's pretty much it again with the 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 reminder that the help button is always there so you can also ask access the help desk through the website so i believe that is it in terms of the website and again we know there are some loading time issues we're not sure where that's coming from um we we probably just have to you know get some technical help with that. And um, any questions or comments on the website, Linda? Not right now. I I I guess I'll go through it kind of like Pamela did. I read some of her comments, and uh, I'll go through it again. And if I if I do have comments, so I guess one of the issues is we don't really have a point person yet on the outreach and network mm -hmm. uh, guild, right? But so this is the, be the beauty of friends at lifeboat.academy. Any, anything that you need to um, communicate, you can just send to friends at lifeboat.academy and then we'll channel it where it needs to go. Oh, I see, because that's the main email. Who, who, who actually reads that, friends at lifeboat? Uh, a I mean, lot of us. <laughs> so it's a it's a shared inbox. And that's actually been one of the things that we're still trying to, we have a system in place, we're actually trying to debug the system so that uh, the messages don't fall through the cracks. And apologies ahead of time if any messages have fallen through the cracks. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it gets co read, it's sort of any one of us can go in and then triage the messages and send them to the right person, forward them to the right Got person. It. Okay. So without an assigned point person, just send everything to friends at Life Academy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's it. Um, that covers and, well, everything just, for... Go ahead. My turn. <laughs> In circle. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to say um, uh, for the uh, help desk, any questions that you have that you submit is really helpful for the help desk because it it tells us what people what kind of information people are, lo are looking for if the information that they're looking for isn't already on the help desk so it's that's uh that one is not an imposition it's actually really helpful mm -hmm. and that's, that's and that's add. yeah and we're trying and that's part of the reason why we set it up as a help desk because it becomes really easy 
if and likewise it's integrated with the email so if uh likewise if you send an email to friends at lifeboat academy i wish to know more about blah 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 we can attach a help desk article if there's one already available we can just say oh here's here's the place to look for that or if 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 it isn't there then we can answer the email and then add it to the help desk at the same time so it's it's an integrated system cool all right well i think that pretty much covers it and um hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to splice these <laughs> two recordings together the before the the break and the after the break and um yeah, so uh, again, if you're viewing this on YouTube and you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and ask either through the help desk or the email or through office hours. And um, other than that, we are going to have another onboarding session next Tuesday where we'll, we will be going over how we use Asana, which is a task management project management system. And then next Friday, we'll be going over sociocracy and how that shows up in our day to day. So I think that's it, and thanks, and thank you, guys. We'll Have see you again soon. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. I think we're back. Sorry for the technical interruption, and uh, we were just going over Slack and. Um, I'm not sure what happened before we got cut off, but I wanted to say. Um, if you have any questions, Linda was having some questions about the uh, downloading the app and getting it installed. If you would like, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one office time, and we can actually help walk through getting everything set up the way that you want it to. So um, if you, and that's also for anyone watching this video, if you have any questions about anything that we've covered today, feel free to sign up for one of the office hours and um and we can take it from there. So uh, the last two things that I wanted to show folks, um, one is the help desk. And again, lifeboatacademy.freshdesk.com is the help desk. It works like any of the other help desks that you've been on for um, probably for you know different software. Um, you can actually uh, put in uh, a, a question like driver statement, and it should come up with, uh, oh, right here, Lifeboat Academy driver statement and agreement. So everything that we covered today in this video is also duplicated on the webs on the help desk. So you can read our driver statement right here, and you can always provide us feedback at the bottom. We are trying to keep things up to date. And, and complete, but you know, uh, we're only human. And so if you aren't finding what you were looking for, you can actually just click, no, this article wasn't very helpful. It'll pop up a little form and you can put in whatever you, you know, what was missing or what was out of date or what were you looking for that you couldn't find. And that will instantly send a message to us um, like as an email and we can have a, a conversation that way back and forth. Um, you'll also notice that when you click on any of the articles, you'll see related articles off to the side. And we try to do as much as we can to link them um, so that you can, you know, if there's more information, there there may be something there. And we've also organized a few little um, knowledge bases, little subsets. Uh, if you're a lifeboat builder, um, there's a set of articles for what you might be interested in, um, how we can help you build your lifeboat. Um, the, the steps that we suggest, um, or likewise, if you are wanted to come for a visit, um, actually see us here on Sadea's Pender Island. And if you're looking for ways of investing or getting, um, uh, getting more involved, there's also some specific articles there. So you can come to the help desk at any point, um, browse the articles, connect with us by submitting a ticket. Or if you happen to be on the website, you can also access the help desk on every page in the lower right-hand corner. There's gonna be this help button. If you click it, it's going to bring up uh, a, what's the question that you have and the same thing. So if I put in driver statement into the help desk here, 
then it's going to bring up, oh, look, there we go. And you can see it right from the website. And the same thing. Is that thing the easiest? I'm sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. It, is that the easiest way to get to the help desk is to go to the website and then click on help? Okay. So yeah. That was kind of my basic yeah. question. Yep. I mean, it's it's super easy to go to the, the webs. The help desk online is just lifeboatacademy.freshdesk.com. So any browser will get you there quick, quickity split. Uh, but you can also access it. It's the same exact information. It's just two different ways in. Okay. Um, so, and then this is our, our website. And again, we are trying to keep it up to date, but we are, are um, have limited staffing hours available. And um, so, you know, uh, feedback is always so helpful. Anybody with those abilities and skills who want to jump in and help us out with that, that would be very, very welcome. Mm -hmm. Linda? I, I, one thing I did notice when I just took a very cursory look through it, um, it made me it made me feel like the website wasn't really terribly active and you might want to fix it or something it seemed like every like the, uh if you click around on it there something pops up it says um do this but it was the same do this for m most things does that make sense mm. um well we've only like, just oh, launched the website uh in in okay. january so oh, okay. we're we're still actually shaking the bugs out of it, and we've got, we've got some it, okay. loading issues um, where everything is a bit slow to load. So yeah, we're still shaking that out. We're okay. And it's one of the things that um, I wanted to bring up to the um, what's the name of that guild? The outreach, outreach and guild. Network. Outreach and network. Yeah, yeah. that's where. Because we we don't we don't yet have a way of you know you know these things come up. What do we do with them? Who do we talk to? Right. Is, so, so we have we have a very very kind and very generous um, uh, web developer who built this for us, but then who contacts him? You know, if there's well, something I, that happens that we I, can't do ourselves, then so 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 this is where the magic of the guilds come in, <laughs> useful. It's like now that now we know there are things that we need to discuss. It's just working out how to prepare that and how to how to direct it so that it it uh, it doesn't cause more problems than it fixes yeah and and yeah. i, I want to add to the again we don't have staff nobody here has staff and our web developer has generously volunteered has donated all of the time for just all of the design work and all of the setup and um, so we want to be really respectful and not go back to him for every little tweak. So we need to develop the in-house capacity so that we can be updating things without relying on that generosity, over relying on that generosity. Um, so mm -hmm. this is very much a mutual aid, you know, network. This is we are the ones we are the ones who are doing this. And um, but what I mostly what I wanted to point out is, um, you know, there's a little bit about us, um, which gives you the sort of the overview of what we're trying to do, um, what this project is all about. There is an events page that, again, we try to keep up to date with ways that you can get involved and with uh, active ways of, you know, if you want to sign up for something, you can click on it right from the events page. Uh, there's a place where potential investors or donors, excuse me, can get more information. Um, we are also have our blog, our magazine. Um, right now, we just have some placeholder stories, which are mostly things that I've already published on Medium. But we're hoping, again, to get people more actively involved in contributing to it so that the magazine can actually be a, a place where we can all be sharing our, our thoughts and kind of do some collaborative lighting, writing, collaborative learning um, on the website. And um, and I think that's pretty much it, again, with the, the, the reminder that the help button is always there. So you can also ask, access the help desk through the website. So I believe that is it in terms of the website. And again, we know there are some loading time issues. We're not sure where that's coming from. Um, we we probably just have to you know get some technical help with that. And um, any questions or comments on the website, Linda? 
Not right now. I, I, I guess I'll go through it kind of like Pamela did. I read some of her comments and uh, I'll go through it again. And if I, if I do have comments, so I guess one of the issues is we don't really have a point person yet on the outreach and network mm -hmm. uh, guild, right? But so this is the, be the beauty of friends at lifeboat.academy. Any, anything that you need to um, communicate you can just send to friends at lifeboat.academy and then we'll channel it where it needs to go. Oh, I see, because that's the main email. Who 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 actually reads that? Friends at lifeboat. Uh, a I lot mean. of us. <laughs> so it's a it's a shared inbox. And that's actually been one of the things that we're still trying to we have a system in place. We're actually trying to debug the system so that uh the messages don't fall through the cracks and apologies ahead of time if any messages have fallen through the cracks um but uh yeah it it gets co-read it's sort of any one of us can go in and then triage the messages and send them to the right person forward them to the right Got person it. okay so without an assigned point person just send everything to friends at life academy okay yeah yeah and I think that's it. Um, that covers and, well, everything just, for, go ahead. My turn <laughs> in circle. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to say um, uh, for the uh, help desk, any questions that you have that you submit is really helpful for the help desk because it, it tells us what people, what kind of information people are, lo are looking for if the information that they're looking for isn't already on the help desk. So it's that's uh, that one is not an imposition. It's actually really helpful. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's and that's add. yeah. And we're trying, and that's part of the reason why we set it up as a help desk because it becomes really easy. If and likewise, it's integrated with the email. So if uh, likewise, if you send an email to friends at Lifeboat Academy, I wish to know more about blah 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 we can attach a help desk article if there's one already available we can just say oh here's here's the place to look for that or if 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 it isn't there then we can answer the email and then add it to the help desk at the same time so it's it's an integrated system cool all right well i think that pretty much covers it